share some, some scripture first. It is Pentecost Sunday, yeah. and we've, you know, we've just asked Holy Spirit to come and to, to move in the midst of this service. So I, I don't know what it's going to look like, and I'm, I'm not the, you know, I'll be honest, if it, when it comes to organizing, I'm really good. When it comes to being organic and following wind, <laughs> I'm not so good at that. So just to be honest, so I've, again, I've asked people, Becky, Diana, the staff knows, we've, we've sent out emails to all of the, the leadership, anybody who's on the Camryo Healings Rooms, the Restoration Ministry Team, the, the Prophetic Ministry Team, the Altar Ministry Team, the Prayer <laughs> Ministry Team. I think probably everybody in this room probably got that, one of those emails. And, that, and we've just said, spend this week, spend the time before Holy Spirit and just pray in tongues and ask the Lord what this would look like. Because see, it's really all about Him. You know, I mean, we, we always say that, right? But it, it really is. We're going to go through Scripture and I'm going to show you that, that Jesus made it clear who, who he was, who Holy Spirit was before he ever left, right? So, I, and again, like most of you and probably like the disciples, they didn't have a clue when Pentecost came, what they were getting into and what was going to happen. That's that word suddenly. They were unaware, totally unaware what was going to happen. So let's look at some scripture first. John 6, 63, it says, and this is Jesus speaking. These are red letter verses, okay? If you look them in your Bible, this is Jesus speaking, right? It is the spirit who gives life and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and are life. So the spirit is what gives life, okay? So first thing about Holy Spirit is whenever he's around, there's life, okay? There's life. So if, if you have an area in your life that has death or doesn't appear to have life, that's a good place to start with Holy Spirit. Okay? Because once he shows up, there's going to be life. Okay? This is interaction, guys. I need your help. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. Okay, don't get too excited. Luke 11.13 If you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Okay, so if the Spirit's life, and the way you get the Spirit, according to that scripture, is to ask. It's as simple as that. Okay? So, if you need Holy Spirit in an area in your life, whether it's your work, your home. Oh, Becky had all these stations around, right? Whether it was your ministry, your work, your relationship, your job, your, you needed favor, you needed relationships, any of those things. If you need that, first and foremost, all you have to do is ask. Okay? Because God's a good father. Right? And he's going to give you the gift. He's going to give you Holy Spirit. See, Jesus already did everything. Right? He did everything all the way up to getting to his resurrection and then everything he did in heaven as the high priest is complete. The only thing he left for him to do when that was all said and done was to send Holy Spirit. Right? So now Holy Spirit's just waiting around for us to ask him. To ask Father for more Holy Spirit. You don't seem convinced. I'll move on. John 14, 15 through 17. If you love me, this again, Jesus, keep my commandments. And I will pray that Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him and he dwells with you and you will be, and he will be in you. 
Okay, so Jesus said he was going to send you a helper. Okay, that word helper is intercessor, consoler, advocate, and comforter. Okay, so this, comf- this helper is with you, and it's, it's by the Spirit, okay? So the world doesn't know it. Don't, and here's something I always tell people. Don't expect the world to do anything except be like the world. If you're expecting the world to be like the church, you're deceived. Right? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> When I watch the news, which I don't really watch it much, or I listen to something and I hear people say, oh, oh the world's going to hell. Yeah, they're going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> they're just going. So I don't expect them to look like Jesus. Now the church, that's a different story. right? Jesus said that he was going to send us a helper. Right? Someone to come alongside and be with you all the time. Now that's by the Spirit, okay? The world doesn't know him. So don't expect the world to, to, to understand or to appreciate or know the things of Holy Spirit. The only time the world will see it is if God opens their eyes. God touches them with the power of God and they have a new thought. Then all of a sudden they'll get it. But if they don't, they'll look at it totally and completely, and have no idea what's going on. It's just the way it is. Okay? So the helper is the spirit of truth. Okay? So if you need to know something, if you need to understand something, that the helper is always going to tell you stuff, he's always going to talk to you from this. Right? This is the truth. It's the word. He's always going to talk to you from that. So let me just make you, you, did anybody here want to hear the Holy Spirit better? Yes. I should have a hand up. Oh, yeah. I should put the other one up. If you want to hear Holy Spirit better, spend more time here. The more you know of this, and I don't mean memorized, that's good. Don't, I'm not saying don't, but it's not the, it's not the act of memorization of this word, Right? It is the, it's the reading, the consuming, the beholding, the having, the abiding, the keeping it close to you, as Ali was saying, be in proximity to it. And the more you get to that point, then the more Holy Spirit can talk to you. Because he's always going to start from the spirit of truth. No matter what else, he's going to lean you towards this. Okay, He's not going to tell you to do something crazy. It might end up being crazy, right? But, it, but he's not going to tell you something weird because that's not how he works. He's, he works with the truth, okay? Somebody appreciated that. <laughs> I love that verse because it says, the spirit of truth who the world cannot see or the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. So that should mean to me that, that as the church, we should see the Holy Spirit and know the Holy Spirit. And so I started praying, and I read that this week, I, and I just that, that word see jumped off the page. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, I want to see you. Okay? Because the world, I mean, I know him, but I want to see him. Because that's, that's proof. The world doesn't see or know him, but that should mean the, the converse, right? Back to math class, like, that we should see and know him. Yes? So that should be a good prayer for you. If you don't see and know him, then say, God, I, I want to see and know you in this way, in the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26. But the helper, there he is again, right? The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you into remembrance of all things that I say to you. So that word is the same helper. It's the same word. It means intercessor, consoler, advocate, and comforter. It's the same person. He's the Holy Spirit, okay? And he's going to teach you. So does anybody here need help with something? Yes. Good. You're in the right place. Holy Spirit can teach you. you know, and what is he going to teach you? He's going to teach you what Jesus already said to you. 
It's going to bring all things back to your remembrance. That word remembrance is to remind quietly, suggest to memory, put in mind, remember, bring into or put into remembrance. So Holy Spirit's job is to take what you've read and what you've been in, right? Spirit of truth, from the truth. He's taking that and he's reminding you of it. Right? He's bringing it back to remembrance. Let me take one thing aside. He is not going to remind you of math facts that you learned in third grade. Okay? It's, he can. He can. I agree. I've, I've, had him help me, I've had him help me, remind me of where things were and stuff like that. But his primary goal is to remind you of the truth, that which Jesus has said to you. Now, maybe if Jesus helped you with your math facts in third grade, he'll help you again. Right? But, but you understand, he brings life. He's the spirit of truth, the comforter, the one that comes alongside, and he's bringing everything that Jesus said, whether it's from this word or told you in person, back to your remembrance. Okay? You should love it. We would be a wreck without him. Right? We'd have no life. No life. Still there? Yes. Okay. Acts 1.8. Oh, yeah. Larry, you want to quote it? But he shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and the ends of the earth. So Holy Spirit's coming with, with life. He's going to be, he is the spirit of truth, so he totally is going to talk to you from the word. He's going to bring anything that Jesus has said to you and everything that Jesus has said to you back to your remembrance. He's going to comfort you. He's going to never leave you. He's always going to be with you. And then he's going to fill you with power. And that's not just power to be something. It's power to be a witness of your walk with Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what it means to be a witness. He's not going to make me say things that I don't know. He's going to always bring it back to the life that I walk out day to day to day because that's where I have authority. Okay, so he's not going to make me be Larry. Right? He's just not. I'm not. I don't have to walk in Larry's shoes. I have to walk in my shoes. Okay, so he's going to make me be a witness of my relationship with Jesus Christ to somebody, that, whether they're in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the outermost parts of the world. So he's going to start close and he's going to work his way out in your life. Okay, because he has a plan to glorify Jesus. Next page. All that, and there's more. There's plenty more that Jesus said of Holy Spirit, but I want to get to Acts chapter 2. Starting in verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, and they were all in one accord, that doesn't mean they were in a Honda. No. Everybody saw that one coming. They were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. See, the first time I heard that joke, Pastor Steve told me right after they bought their new accord back in the 80s. And he bought it because he wanted to be in one accord. <laughs> it was dumb then, but it still works. It still works. Every time I read it, I see that little Honda logo next to it. It's because I wrote it next to it, but that's okay. There came a sound of a mighty rushing wind that filled the whole house where they were seated. Right? Then there appeared on them divided tongues of fire that sat on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there, so, so that's just, that's that momentary experience. I don't know how long that lasts. I wish there was a, a point that said how long that they were in there, how long the wind blew, and how long it took to get tongues of fire on everybody's head and get everybody to recognize it and everybody to function from that place. I don't know. But to me, that's been my prayer. So Holy Spirit, I, I want for Jubilee a corporate movement in Holy Spirit that has an individual effect on every person. Right? And, and, if, if, and, and not if. When God chooses to do that in the manner in which he does, everybody will know. 
right? Because what happened next, right? There was 120 people in a room praying, right? All got together, all in one accord in one place, and all of a sudden, and that word suddenly, right, means they were unaware and unexpected. So they were praying, but they really didn't know what they were praying for or what was going to happen. Anybody ever feel like that? I do, right? We'll get on to that. But so, so then it says, and there, was, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation of the earth. When, the sound, when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speaking in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, look, are not all these Speaking Galilees, Galileans? And how is it that each one now, we, we now hear each in our own language that they were born? Skip down to 11, because I'm not going to try to read all those places where they were. It could be Camarillo, Oxnard, Ventura, Thousand Oaks, <laughs> right? It could be Mississippi, Louisiana, right? It's all, it's just, they were where they were from, Right? We hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. Okay, so that's what your tongue does. It speaks of the wonderful work of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what kind, whatever could this happen? And others, mocking, said, eh, they just drunk on new wine. So let me, let me tell you something. When the Holy Spirit comes, right, these were devout men. Okay, and these were not the 120. These were men, men and women scattered around the city of Jerusalem. They were there because it was the feast, right? Okay, and they were still there. They were all hanging out, doing whatever they were doing, right? But they were devout men. These weren't sinners, right? These these weren't the you know the the people that you wouldn't hang with, the riffraff, the right? These were the devout men. Right? But look at, the, look at their expressions. They start off confused. They go to amazed. Then they marvel. Then they go back. Then they marvel some more. <laughs> then they get perplexed. And then they end up in mocking. Right? So I know for me, when Holy Spirit starts to do something corporately, I, I fit into those places. Just being honest, there's sometimes I marvel at what's happening, and there's sometimes I'm perplexed, sometimes I'm confused, sometimes I'm, I don't get to mocking, but if I get to mocking, I know where I'm at. <laughs> right? I'm just being honest, right? Holy Spirit, when he comes, he immediately separates us in our soul. Right? He immediately starts to work on, 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 on you, on me. I'll, I'll speak to me. He immediately starts to look at me and say, okay, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> right? When it, gets, when it all gets crazy, I mean, I love those flags, those laser flags. <laughs> I just think how, hard, how, how bad they'll hurt when I get hit with one. But, <laughs> but, but when everything starts to get moving, right, in Holy Spirit, sometimes, you know, I have, to, I, have to, I have to quiet myself, right? I have to not look at the outward expression, because that's all it is. Whether, whether they're dancing or flag waving, whether you're leaping up and down, whether you're rolling on the floor or swinging from, well, we don't have chandeliers. You go to the, you gotta go to the family room for the fans. It doesn't matter what the outward expression is of Holy Spirit at the moment, right? But if you look at the outward expression, you, for me at least, if I spend too, too much time looking at the outward expression of Holy Spirit, I end up amazed, confused, perplexed, marveled, and, and, and leaning and starting to get lean towards, could be mocking, okay? Because Holy Spirit's going to check my heart, right? Because if he's a helper who brings life, 
right, and is talking truth and reminding me of Jesus, the first thing he's going to do is check my heart. You don't, get a, you, you don't get a free pass with Holy Spirit. Okay, at least I don't. Maybe if he does you, somebody please tell me how. Because I never get a free pass with Holy Spirit. He always checks my heart. Always. Okay, and I'll, and I'll, I'll show you. 1 Corinthians 2, starting in uh, verse 10, and we'll go through this quick. But God revealed them to us through his Spirit. So revelation, all revelation comes through Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man uh, which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Right? So when someone tells you they know what God's doing, they, they, they're, either, they're either speaking of Holy, through Holy Spirit or with Holy Spirit or they're just telling you they something. Because Holy Spirit, <laughs> it's got to be Holy Spirit. Right? Because only the Spirit of God knows what the Spirit's doing. Yes. Only. Okay? Now we have received, uh, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, uh, that we might know the things which have been freely given to us by God. So the Spirit's here to show us the things that God's already given to us, freely. Yes, Pastor Brian. Thank you. Now these, these things we also speak, not in words of men's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spirit with spirit. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can they know them because they are, they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of God or the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So this one verse here, 14. But the natural man, that word natural is soulish. It comes from, the, it's, it's a derivative of suke, it's the soul, okay? Does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. So when I end up in the sense of the Spirit, the first thing he checks on me is my soul, okay? And I'll talk of me, you can all be, be safe, <laughs> okay, when the Holy Spirit comes, whether it's in my own prayer time or in a prayer meeting or in a corporate meeting, whenever Holy Spirit does, the first thing he does to me is check my soul. Okay, and when I say that, the first thing he's asking me to do is, what are you going to do with this? Right? I said at the beginning, I'm a great organizer. So when stuff starts to happen and things start to move, Holy Spirit's going to go, Brian, what are you going to do about this? Okay, let me, let me let you in behind the curtain. Years ago, when that would happen, I'd start to go, okay, we've got to get the ushers over here. We've got to get this. We've got to move these things. We've got to take care of that. We've got to, you know what? And, and that's okay. There is, there, is a, there is a good point to that led by spirit. But if, it's, if, it is, if it is your default to start to do something to help him, First thing I, you, know, you can learn about Holy Spirit is he really doesn't need your help. He can turn chaos into glory. And he just loves to do it. So he really doesn't need your help. But the first thing he wants to do is check your soul. And I'll say for me, he wants to check my soul. He wants to say, what are you going to do with this? And if I say, oh, I'm not too sure, that looks a little weird. I'm feeling a little perplexed right now. Maybe I'm a little confused, right? What he does at that point is, is he, he, again, Holy Spirit will not leave you, right? Jesus said he wouldn't. He'll be with you forever and you with him. So remember, he will not leave you, but he will stop talking to you. 
right? <laughs> Any relationship. You get a little, your husband and wife, friends, you get a little something in there, right? First thing they do, first thing that happens, whoop, shut down. Holy Spirit's just like, okay, you're a little, you're a little perplexed, a little confused. I'll use, I'll use terms we all know here in this church. You don't want to yield? <laughs> right? That's why Holy Spirit comes. Holy Spirit comes with the desire for you to yield to him. Not yield and become, ah, oh, I gotta do these crazy things. He doesn't care about crazy. Crazy is an expression. He cares about your soul. So he will let other people get really crazy around you. Or the one thing that you said, I'll never do that. He will put the ones that do that really close. Because, not because he wants to bother you, but because he wants to check your soul. He wants to check your heart. Are you willing to still go with him even if he's going to go through crazy, perplexed, confused, amazed? Because he will. That's what he does. He wants to take us from chaos into glory. But that's not a straight line. Remember, he's kind of wind or a dove, right? Or fire. They don't, none of that goes organized and straight and perfect and in step with you. It just kind of goes like, hey, let's blow you over here and see what you think for a little while. See what your heart will do. See if you can yield. And you know what? He, he just, he, that's, he's just always going to check your heart. At least me. I don't know about you. He just does. So for me, if I find myself confused, perplexed, and that, then I know one thing. I'm probably, if not in my soul, I'm leaning that direction, right? I may want to yield, but I'm just, I'm, I've got too much stuff coming at me for me to quiet myself and yield. Does that make sense? Yes. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. The other thing, I know when I, when I yield quickly and I'm, and I'm good, when I'm full of the Spirit, then it always looks like Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. For those that are Christ have been crucified in their flesh and the passions and the desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit and not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Right? So, so when you're full and Holy Spirit comes, or when you're walking with him and he's moving you and you're yielding and you're, you're pliable, that's a real cool word, pliable, it's like clay. When you're pliable, then, then you'll, you'll exude the fruit. You'll be okay with it. You can go, yeah, I love, it's like, oh, it's love, some of love, right? But if you're not pliable, you don't go, I don't see no summer loves. People don't understand anything. Summer love was full of crazy hippies and drug addicts doing things that we should never even consider doing. Right? That was, you can ask a lot of my team, well, two weeks ago before the picnic, that was me. I was like, I can't believe, why are we glorifying these crazy hippies and their drug issues? I can't believe that. That's, just, that's not God. And Holy Spirit said, well, why don't you just yield and go with it? And I had to get out of my confusion, my perplexion, and my conceitedness, my provoking one another and envying one another. And once I get out of that, I don't care what you call the summer. Okay, because you yield, you become flexible, you move with the wind, you're like a sailboat, right? Not a tugboat trying to control everything. Right? I'm just being honest, that's, that's my nature. Outside of Christ, I, I want to funnel everything into complete control and 
organization. Holy Spirit says, how about no control and chaos? I'm like, oh, dude, that, 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 the tilt. Okay. Okay, so now we're at a place where we can go, okay, if I'm, if I'm in the spirit, then I look like Galatians 5. If I'm in the flesh, and I like to use the word soul because I, I know there's the Galatians also has the, the, the acts of the flesh, but most of us can write most of those off. We're not doing that. But I guarantee you, we'll probably fall into conceit, provoking one another and envying one another. I need it my way and I need you to do it when I want it. That's probably, and again, now I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. That's how I want it. If you fall into that, you can get an amen, but that's okay. But so, so if I find myself in conceited, provoking one another, envying one another, or any of the rest of the stuff that's in there, the confusion, the perplexion, and all that, then, then how do I get out of that? Right? Because that's really the goal. If, if it, I, whoa, I gotta go. Okay, how do you get filled up? First of all, he's the helper. He's not leaving you. So all you got to do is again reestablish that connection with, with it. And that first comes with that pliability, that yielding. And so when it starts to happen, you say, okay, God. I, I used it today in the offering, James 4, 6. God resists pride. He always resists pride. There's never, I've yet to find a time where God doesn't resist pride. Okay? So get out of pride. Pride is I can do it myself, period. Doesn't matter what it's about, I can do it myself, okay? So if you're thinking to yourself, eh, I don't need that, I can do it, okay? God's resisting you. There's no grace. There's no grace in that. So just let it go. Go with it. Because you, you know what? Because trust me, God, will, God can outweigh your pride, Okay, well, Holy Spirit's like, I can stand here right next to you, all of the, but we're not having a conversation until you get rid of that pride. Right? Because you're not going to, because you're not, let, church, you're not going to do it on your own. Amen. Holy Spirit's like, you're not going to do it. <laughs> Jesus already did it, and you're not going to do it. You need Holy Spirit's help. We can do nothing without him. Nothing. Nothing. Again, I'm speaking of me, but I know that to be true. Philippians 3.3. 3, For we are the circumcised who worship God in spirit and truth. Rejoice in Christ and take no confidence in the flesh. That word confidence is to pacify. I'll just, you don't even need the rest of the definition. To pacify. Just think of that a minute. I, I'm, I have a, a one-year-old granddaughter, Hazel, and she walks around the house with a little pacifier in her mouth and a little string that attaches it to her shirt so she doesn't lose it. Right? And that's what, that's what Holy Spirit's saying. He goes, he goes, don't let your flesh have that pacifier. Because that's what it's like. When you want it your way, you're like, oh, I'm going to have it my way. my way or the highway Holy Spirit goes eh, highway then right take no confidence in the flesh so how do we get filled first admit we can't do it without him right that's the first thing Jesus I'm utterly dependent I need Holy Spirit he's the giver of all life I can't do it without him and trust me I've tried I, I can't do it without him. Next, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.6, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, who is the Holy Spirit, right? According to John. In that, in Acts 2.23, it says that he is the gift, which is through the laying on of hands. Okay? So first thing is you, you have to stir it up. You have to re-engage your relationship through Holy Spirit. Somebody else can't do it for you, okay? If he's not talking to you, it's your job to start talking to him and yielding to him first, okay? 
Just think of it like any other relationship. If I do something stupid in my invader's relationship, which is most often, <laughs> right? If I do something stupid and get all, oh, I don't have to do that. You, you can't make me do that. I'm the man of the house. I'm the priest, the prophet, and the king. I dare you to make me try to do that, <laughs> right? And she goes quiet. She does what the, the old, the, our friends used to always say, okay, I'm just going to duck and let it all hit you then, <laughs> right? So she just just said that, you know what? It, until I get my, until I catch a new thought, repent, and come back and reestablish relationship by talking, which will probably sound something like this, I'm sorry, I'm a dope. <laughs> Would you forgive me? Yes, I love you. And then we move on. It's the same with Holy Spirit. When you get stuck in you doing what you want to do, back to Holy Spirit first comes with having a new thought. And when you do, he's immediately there. He's just like Ellie was saying. He's now his proximity is right there. Go ahead, say anything you want. I got you. We got it. Life starts to flow. Comfort starts to come. Peace engages. All of a sudden, it's just rushing in. And you're like, whoa, this is, why do I, why do I get like that? Why do I get like that? Right? Because I'm seeing it with this and my natural mind takes over. And this is still being transformed by the renewing of his word. So that's why you've got to keep going back to it. But i got to move on because I'm out of time and I need your guys' help. Two more scriptures. Romans 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. Okay? For we do not know what we should pray as we ought. For the Spirit himself makes intercession with groan that cannot, that cannot be uttered. So Holy Spirit, in, when you pray in tongues, is praying. I always say he prays perfect prayers. Yeah. I've never met Holy Spirit to talk to him, and he's never done it just right. Yeah. I don't have a clue what he's saying <laughs> sometimes, but he's doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because I don't, when I don't know what to pray, or I don't know how to pray, or I don't know when to pray, or I don't know when to decree, or when to bind, or when to loose, the best thing for me, and it might be for you, is just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Take this out of it. See, this is where the problem starts. So if I can get this out of it, by just using this, right? Then I get this out of it. I'm less likely to become the soulish man who will receive nothing from God or get caught in perplexed, confused, right? All the way down to mocking and conceit, provoking one another, right? It's, it's just a downward slope, okay? So engage your prayer language. Engage your prayer language. That's why when we sent out the email, I said, no, pray. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Don't pray what you want. Don't pray what you think's going to happen. Don't pray what you want to happen. Pray in the Spirit. Because he knows what he wants to do. That's, I mean, it seems like a no-brainer to me. Jude 1, 20 and 21. But beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit, keeping yourself in the love of God and looking for the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Praying in the Spirit builds you up. So, not praying in the Spirit tears you down. It's like demolition day on the construction site. Right? It's a mess. There's dust everywhere and it's just... Right? So praying in the Spirit builds you up. So for, for me, when I don't know, when, when this gets involved, I engage this and I engage my tongue. Long before I try to figure it out and pray in the natural. Praying in the natural is wonderful when you know what to do. You're probably, for me, I pray in the natural when it's a known prayer that needs to be prayed. But when it affects me, in my family, in my stuff, long before I try to decree my way out of it, I'm going to go ahead and pray in tongues my way out of it. 
Because, because then there's a, I know I'm yielded to Holy Spirit. So it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do, you got this. Jesus already finished it all. Holy Spirit, you got this. You're going you're gonna to be able to speak to me the spirit of truth that's going to cause my life now to be pliable and flexible and follow him. Because that's what it all comes down to. When it all comes down to it, that's what we want, is we want to be able to follow what he's doing, right? We want to be able to follow what he's doing. One short scripture, I'll just say it, and then John 6, 16, 14 says that he will glorify me. Holy Spirit will glorify me, Jesus. And that word glorify is to make big. So when, when I, when I'm, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I can't get tongues or I, tongues is just, I, I just run out of tongue and I don't mean that in sense. I just keep going and going and going and I need to do something, then the first thing I do is glorify Jesus because that's Holy Spirit's job is to glorify Jesus. So the natural expression after you come out of tongues is to, is to, is to glorify Jesus. Man, you got this. You got this. You got it. You got it. I don't know what you got. I don't know where you're going, but you got it. Right? Okay, so what I saw us doing to end, and this could get, this is a, is everybody who's on the prophetic ministry team, the intercessor team, the healing room team, the restoration ministry team, pretty much everybody who's, who's got that email, just come on up. Come on up, don't wait. You all know who you all are. You all got the email. If you didn't get the email and you fit into those ministries, just come up. Okay? See, they're being pliable and flexible right now. They're like, oh boy, what is he going to do? What is Holy Spirit going to do next? I don't know. Right? So are they going to all come forward? Everybody's coming. Keep coming. If you're on that team, come up. I really, it's, we're going to mobilize this. In Luke 6, verse 38, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will be, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure in which you use, it will be measured back to you. See, Holy Spirit functions from Luke 6.38. Often we think that when I'm full, that, that life takes it from me. Yeah, it does. It does. You leak. We all leak a little Holy Spirit. But we can keep that up. But the best way to get more of Holy Spirit Give him away. In the same measure in which you give him away is the same measure you'll receive back. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Somebody agrees. <laughs> Love agreement. So what I want to do is I want, I want everybody out there to come stand in front of somebody here. Don't tell them anything. Right? Because guys, here it is for the ministry team and all that. You don't have to know what they're going through to be able to to be able to to, to walk in the spirit and be flexible. Just just pray over them. Just pray in tongues. Just speak over them the goodness of God and speak life into them. Cause them. You have a word? Yep. Come on up. Okay. And we're just gonna give Holy Spirit some room to be flexible. spirit of life and being I am the spirit of life I bring good news in the world today you keep hearing the phrase fake news watch how the good news that I proclaim comes forth upon this world and in this life for the word of God will be proclaimed in a way that you have never known before for I will overcome I will overcome fake news with good news for my news goes forward upon this earth. It goes forward in a way that you've never understood. What has before been lies and deceit, now watch the truth. For I am the spirit of truth. Bring forth truth in this world, especially, especially 
in the areas that try to influence your lives, the things that you read, the things that you listen to, the things that you think you believe in, watch the spirit of truth that the good news now will overrule the fake news. Even the fake news of the enemy will be overruled by me. And you will see it. You will see it in your papers. You will see it in your life. You will see it around you. Watch now as the word of the living God goes forth and bears life saith I the Lord yes Jesus yes Jesus okay now stop praying stop praying and go and then those who just received go give it away 